But at today at Old Trafford, it was not only us sitting there analysis, uh, doing the analysis of the game. There was this thing at the st in the stands as well. They were nearly going at him. You know, they were, they were going for him. And then he some did something. To be fair to him, you, it couldn't get worse, to be said. But he, he, he got a bit better. He, he, he didn't, they didn't challenge him too much. Thank God for him. But it was like the crowd was getting at him. And I think that... I'm not saying that he will leave in the summer. Because if you leave, you have to give him a Lamborghini to drive from Old Trafford <laughs> away. But there was a feeling today, this was the end of Casemiro. His legs are gone lately. It seems that his uh, body language is not good at all. So it's this kind of thing that is so sad when you see... It's like a boxer at the last game. You, uh, you know we will end up at the floor. You know, and that was the feeling in Old Trafford today. Uh, a lot of injuries, of course, for Manchester United going into this. Side. Hence, Casemiro uh, was playing at centre-back. This is what Ten Hag had to say uh, about the injuries and how it is affecting his team's uh, performance. He came out and said, uh, well, basically, it's like trying to swim uh, with your hands tied behind your back. Uh, Jules, do you have any empathy for him? <laughs> No, not at all. Uh, I understand the injury situation. We've said it before many times. He had Cambuala on the bench, who is a proper centre-back. Didn't choose to play him. He had Lissandro Martinez, who wanted to play in this game today. So he could be ready for the FA Cup final. Didn't want to play him. So, OK, Casemiro plays there. He doesn't want to play there. He told Ten Hag already. Ten Hag insists to playing him there. And Casemiro doesn't even want to be at United anywhere right now. So <laughs> I don't does? think he likes Ten Hag either. I don't think they just get... Yeah, who does? You're right. I don't think he gets on. He just wants to still be fit for the Copa America, go with Brazil and never come back ever again to Manchester. So let's see where that goes because like Craig said, there's still a long way to go on his contract. So I understand it's an issue, of course, when you've got all the centre-backs out. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not denying that, of course. But... Again, when they had the ball and when they, when they were trying to attack, you don't need centre-backs to attack, do you? Mm. And you're, apart from Bruno Fernandes, who was not here today, of course, which is a big miss, but most of your other forwards have been fit for most of the season and yet you're one of the worst attacks in the league, certainly amongst the big clubs. You're the worst at expected goals. You're the worst at chances created. So, like, I, I can take the injury excuse to a certain point, but it's not the only reason why they've been so bad this season. The, on course for their worst ever Premier League season. It's every, every facet of the, the pitch, even the goalkeeper. You know, we showed those saves today. I mean, come on. We used to call, we, we'd say those, those uh, saves were from the back page. You know, the, the cameras were flicking. I mean, my God, the way that he threw himself at them. It was he like, makes it up, mate. And that's a little No, bit I'll hard. give you Jeez. the one from Dallo. Uh, from, uh, not from Dallo. I give you the one from Martinelli. Martinelli was was a good save. Some of the other ones though were were, were for the camera boys behind the goals. Look, when you get to Casemiro's age, what you need when you go to your club is people around you that are going to mask your issues. They're going to help the the situation. They're going to make it easier for you. And what United are doing, this United team, for every player. Uh, is, is showing their deficiencies. Whatever player goes in, your deficiencies have been exposed more and more because yeah. of the weakness of this side. Uh, if Casemiro goes into a good side, the legs don't look as bad. The body language is obviously different. You can get round that. You cannot get round it in th this United side because every function, every functioning part of the team is dysfunctional. Can we read some of these? One win in their last eight Premier League games, 14 Premier League losses this season. That's the most since 1990. Eighth in the Premier League table. They've never finished lower than seventh before the Premier League 1990 in Division, low, in Division One uh, was their lowest finish. They currently have a minus four goal difference. Uh, that's their worst goal difference since 1974. And to rub salt into the wound, Jan, we of course saw the finish Santiago Bernabeu this week. An amazing stadium. So many great new stadiums around Europe and beyond. And then you've got those pictures of the end uh. <laughs> of that waterfall falling through the Old Trafford roof. And I suppose what a great symbol of how this great club is crumbling, not only on the pitch, but off it. It, it was amazing. It was, like, it, it was like someone had planned it. It was like Sir Jim Ratcliffe had planned the leak just to show this is ground zero. We start here. It can't get worse. It can't get worse. He, he even talked to gods. It was like unbelievable. And and, and again, I, I, I won't name drop too much Japstam because Japstam, I talked to him and I, and I said to him, talk me through why you think Ten Hag is the right man. Mind you, they're both from Holland. 
I know when Solskjaer was manager, I like a Norwegian. You know, I understand that. But my last question to Japstam was, if you go to Sir Jim Ratcliffe and he says, Japstam, you used to be a legend in this club. Give me two reasons why I should go on this uh, st- st- stand with this manager. Mm-hmm. To be fair, Yapstan went in with, a, with his Dutch uh, connections and all that. Said the same again. They were in a final, winning a final, getting into FA Cup final. But, I mean, the roof, the leaking. That was in, Ni- N- what do you say, Nigeria? F- Nigeria Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Uh, yeah. uh, Niagara, thank you. Uh, Falls in the stadium. If people went into the press zone afterwards, they were soaking wet. And we were just like <laughs> thinking, this is Old Trafford. 2024, I played against class of 92, I played against Cantona, and look at this Manchester United team, this is where they are, and they are all totally wet. By the way, it's got one of the worst press rooms in all the Premier League clubs as well, it's almost like a disdain that you, the press shouldn't actually even, you know, you guys are lucky to be here, here's the slop. Right. Here's the here's the beef <laughs> stew from three weeks ago. You horrible lot. Have that. It's like the whole thing. I mean, it's been like you. It was like that. You know, twelve years ago when I was when I was still going. It's not like this this roof leaking was some big surprise today. It's been leaking for over a couple of years yeah, now. Okay, well, we and he, that. Mark, yeah. And here's the deal. If you've got a reeking roof. Uh, reeking roof. <laughs> leaking oh, roof. Well, 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 leaking roof. Calm down, man. Not his real teeth. Come on. <laughs> if you've got a leaking roof and you live in Barcelona, it's not a problem. <laughs> or oh, such a problem. If you've got a leaking roof, <laughs> hard for me to say, <laughs> and you live in Manchester, guess what? It rains an awful lot in Manchester. But not just that, the training ground. 